Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. How are you doing today? I hope you are doing very, very well. Uh, first, let's take a moment and just recognize how cute my t-shirt is. My friend Ryan got me this t-shirt for Christmas and I totally love it. The Reading Unicorn, reading a book that says Believe in Yourself. Adore it. Thank you, Ryan, so very, very much. I am coming to you today to do my best books that I read in 2017 that were published this year, with the exception of one, which I'll tell you about in a minute. Um, the problem was I was going to do seven, and I was really trying to narrow it down to seven. It wasn't happening. And then I got to 10. I'm like, okay, do 10. 10 a normal number. But there, are, there were just these two other books that I couldn't weed out. So it's a top 12. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. It just is going to be a top 12. It's my channel. I can do it. Um, but all of these books were so fantastic. I had a phenomenal reading year, really. I read 97 books this year, and so many of them were so, so very, very good. So let's get started because I don't want this video to take forever. And we're going to start with Stay With Me by Adabami Ayobeyo. And this is a the story of a Nigerian couple who have been married for about four years, and they have been struggling to have a baby. And in Nigeria, you learn that it is not uncommon for a husband to take a second, third, fourth wife um, and live in a polygamous relationship. Um, the main characters have decided that they are going to remain monogamous, but because of the fact that they haven't had a child yet, the husband's family pressures him into taking a second wife. It is the story of being a parent, being a parent when you are struggling to have children. It is about some of the deceit that goes on in relationships to make other people happy. It is about the discussions around what being a parent means about the loss of children. It's about the loss of a relationship. It's also about the hope and power of a relationship and what it can overcome. It is freakingly beautifully written. Um, she is an amazing writer. That this is a debut novel is crazy. Um, the American version is just as pretty as this, but thank you, Simon, for this signed first edition from um, the UK. Look at how beautiful that is. If you haven't read Stay With Me by um, Adabami Ayobeo, Adabeo, I guys, please do it. And again, I apologize for butchering her name. I really do try. I practice, but I'm so bad with that. I'm a reader by trade. I read things the way I think they are in my head, and I don't always say them right, so I apologize already. The next book I'm going to tell you about is The Immortalists by Chloe Benjamin. Now, this is my sort of one other one, because it actually comes out next week in the United States, so you guys are going to get your hands on this immediately, and it is freaking fantastic. This is the story of four children that go to a fortune teller when they're very young and they are told when they're teenagers and they're told when they're going to die. Um, like an actual date that they are going to die. And then you follow those four children with the decisions they make with that knowledge and the lives that they lead. Um, what I will say is that we all make decisions on how we're going to live our life and we really should try to live our life to the fullest but sometimes we're cautious or sometimes we make other decisions because we're scared and this book is about people that make all of those decisions you will see yourself in all four of these characters um i really saw myself in one of them i feel myself to be very much like one of the characters but deeply regretted not being like another one um it's a powerful story about family, it's a powerful story about decisions in life, and it's a powerful story about how choices affect the way our lives go. And it is fantastic. And Chloe Benjamin is going to be starting her tour next week. Please check her website out and go see her. This book is fantastic. That is The Immortalist by Chloe Benjamin. It will be no surprise for you to see this next book on my list, and that is Florence and Ecstasy by Jenna, Jesse Chaffee. Um, I should say that I'm doing the 10 of these books just in order alphabetically, and then there are two that are hands down the best two books that I read um, that were just so phenomenal to me. But all of these books are so very, very, very good. Um, I've talked to you guys ad nauseum about Florence and Ecstasy because I enjoy it so much, but this is the story of Hannah, who is an adult suffering from an eating disorder. She goes to Florence to work her way through it. Jessie Chaffee can paint a picture of Florence like nobody else, and she just gets inside this woman's head, and she will blow your mind. If you haven't read this book, please, please pick it up. You will be blown away. 
The next book on my list is Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine by Gail Honeyman. Now, this book was just won the Costa First Novel Award actually today. Um, so that's pretty exciting. And I will say this book is all about Eleanor for me. Eleanor is a woman who lives a very structured life. And we find out why her life is so structured. And then her life is derailed. Um, it goes off track, let's say, because of interactions with other people and relationships relationships she builds. It is poignant, it is hilarious, it is tragic, and it is lovely. And you will never forget Eleanor Oliphant. Now, I listened to ha the, this as an audiobook, like three quarters of it, and then I finished the last part because I was sitting somewhere and I wanted to know what was going to happen and I couldn't listen to the book. And the audiobook is phenomenal. And then the book itself finished beautifully. I highly recommend Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine. You guys will not forget Gail Honeyman's novel, I promise. The next book is, ooh, book's overboard. Um, the next book is the book that I'm saying this year that gave me the best feel, like the best heart hug. I call it a hug for your heart, and that's The Keeper of Lost Things by Ruth Hogan. Now, this book is about a gentleman who collects things he finds, and he categorizes them sort of in a, an encyclopedia museum in his house, and he passes, and he leaves that to his assistant and says, and charges her, find the owners of these items, find a way to get these items back to these owners. And she does. She takes that on. And it is about her relationships, how she's gotten to there. You find out the stories, whether they are made up or whether or not they're true, is never really necessary about these items because they bring such power to the overall arc. Um, there is a character, a next door neighbor, her name is Sunshine, I believe, and she has Down syndrome and she is just charming. She charms you off the page. It's about the relationships you make after you've had a rough time in a relationship. Um, it really is a hug for the heart. If you just need a book that makes you feel good, this is it. Um, it does wrap up very cleanly. I said that in my initial review. Um, I like my books to maybe have a little more strings, but this definitely just it just will be for you if you just need a good, solid, lovely, lovely book. It's just a lovely book, you guys. And that's The Keeper of Lost Things by Ruth Hogan. Give it to everybody who just needs a book to hug their heart. Um, the next book we'll, I'll talk about very briefly, and that's Roxy by Jennifer Matthew. I will link my, one, uh, uh, my video where I just discussed this book by itself down below if you haven't seen it. This is the story of a young girl who in high school decides to create a zine in order to fight the sexism that is going on in her Texas high school. That's all you need to know. This book should be read by every boy and girl that you know that's in high school. It's about sexism. It's about what we say, how we act, and the way the world works. It's about just changing behavior in order to influence the world. It is powerful and amazing. And Jennifer Matthew is freaking hilarious on Twitter. I totally adore her. And Moxie. It's so good, you guys. The next book is Little Fires Everywhere by Celesting. Now, I will say that this book is, it's up there is probably one. I mean, all of these are bad, but this fought for like the top top because this book is so good. Celestine can create a town and a, in a whole entire community within a few pages, and you are invested. This is the story of two parents and four children and how their life is sort of set on edge when they rent out um, an apartment they own to a single mother who is an artist and her daughter. It is about how parents cannot, all, cannot raise their children all the same way. It is really about parenthood. It's about the liberties we give our children. It's about keeping them too safe. It's about expectations. It's also about, there's a sub story in it about um, a woman, an Asian woman who leaves her baby at a firehouse and it's up for adoption with a white family. And she comes back and she wants the baby. She wants to take the baby back. She's in a better place. She can be a mother now. And there's a court battle that goes on and that sort of is an overlying theme. What does it mean to be a parent? What, what, what do we forgive? What do we work with? What is most important for parents and children? And this book really tackles that subject beautifully. And you will meet people for pages and you will never forget them. That's how good Celestine is as a writer. She is phenomenal. And this book is worth every page. 
That's Little Fires Everywhere. And if you haven't read her first book, it's worth every page, too. She's a phenomenal writer. Okay. Okay, I'm trying, guys. I'm going to try to get this done in the next few minutes. This is a book that I read at the beginning of the year, The Essex Serpent by Sarah Perry, that is phenomenal. And look at this copy that is sent to me. It's beautiful. Um, from England, again, thank you, Simon. This is the story of Clara? Is that her name? Cora. Um, Cora at the beginning of the book, and it's set in the 1800s. 1893 her husband passes away they do not have a good relationship and she takes her son who appears to be on the um autism spectrum and they go to um essex um to a town in essex and in search of the ex ex essex serpent it's about the relationship she creates with the local preacher and his family it's about independence it is gothic and Victorian and immersive and so good, you guys. And I really, really think that Sarah Perry may become one of my favorite writers. This is the only book I've read by her, but I was there in 1893, 94, 95. Um, I, I just felt everything our main character went through. She's a strong, independent, slightly quirky woman. And I just really loved everything about the characters, about the... Um, Oh, yeah, it's so good. Um, if you haven't had a chance to read it yet, I highly, highly recommend The Essex Serpent by Sarah Perry. It is so, so good. This last but not least book in this 10 is no surprise that Lillian Boxfist Takes a Walk by Kathleen Rooney showed up, right? Um, I love Lillian so much. She is an 84, 85 she won't tell you, 85-year-old woman, um, who is walking on New Year's Eve 1984 into 1985, um, and she is walking to a restaurant uh, for New Year's Eve dinner. And you find out that this is the story of her life. She reflects. In the um, 30s and 40s, she was a advertising person. She made um, marketing campaigns for Macy's, and she was the best woman in that role um, at that time, she was paid a lot of money for that job. She then decides to get married and winds up getting pregnant. And at that time, there was no um, leave, no um, paternity, not paternity, maternity leave um, for her. So she left her job. It's about being a mother. It's about, there's a, like a section about postpartum depression. There's a section about what it means when our life is sort of not the way we thought it would be. Um, how marriages can fall apart, relationships can be built. She meets all of these individuals along the way, and she's just so unforgettable. And it's New York in the 80s, and it's visceral and real and gritty. And Kathleen Rooney, I met her, you guys know, I interviewed her, and I just adore her, and I adore this book, and I want everyone to read it. And um, yeah, Lillian Boxfish takes a walk. And now we're to the last two books, and these really are tied for my top two reads of the year. Um, I'm going to do the nonfiction one first and the fiction. I don't have a lot of nonfiction, as you guys can tell, so that a nonfiction book made it into this list is pretty amazing, and that's Hunger by Roxane Gay. This book broke me. Um, I listened to the audiobook because Roxane reads it to you. This is the story of her body. It's a memoir. Um, you find out at age 12 she was gang raped by a group of boys and she talks about how she used eating and her weight as a way to protect herself from this happening again. She talks a lot about fat phobia in America. She talks a lot about fat shaming. Um, she talks about all of the stuff going on in this world that just is so anti being anything but stereotypical. Um, she There's a repetition to the book that just is she's masticating on this idea of being a large person in the united states in the world um and she just she makes you feel you will not walk away untouched by roxanne gay's memoir i tell you it's just amazing and i highly recommend the audiobook um it's so good you guys and it broke my heart and i love roxanne gay you guys know i do you guys know i do and last but not least, what was the best piece of fiction that I read this year? Sing Unburied Sing by Jesmyn Ward. I cannot get this book out of my head. Jesmyn Ward, I t said in my review um, of this book earlier this year, to me, she's the heir apparent to Toni Morrison. There's a section of the world that she is the speaking voice for. She, she gets Mississippi. She gets this rural, sort of poor, 
it's just so good. I don't even know. She just talks in such a poetic, it's like poetry in motion. She talks about race. This is the story of Jojo and his sister. His And Jojo is a young boy who is raised by his mother. She is a drug addict. When she takes drugs, she sees a ghost of her brother. So she continues to do drugs in order to have a relationship with her brother who passed away. Um, at the beginning of the book, her his father, Jojo's father, is released from prison, so the mother decides to take the family up to get him out of prison. It's about race. It's about the relationship between these children and how the son, Jojo, because of his mother, has become more or less the parent to his da his sister. Um, it's about the relationship he has with his grandparents, about the relationships his mother has with his grandparents. There's also another ghost that really represents the racism that still exists and existed in the 40s. It's a ghost of a boy who died on the jail, or actually in the jail, where they're going to pick up um, the father. And his ghost haunts sort of the entire narrative. And it is one of the most real lyrical pieces of perfect fiction I have ever read, and that is Sing Unburied Sing by Jasmine Ward. It's hard, guys. It is not easy topic. It's not easy anything, but it is worth every minute you spend in this book, I promise. And that is Sing Unburied Sing by Jasmine Ward. So this video is a bit long. Sorry, 12 books is hard to get through quickly. But as always, if you are a return subscriber, thank you so much. I appreciate it so, so, so very much. I hope you like this video. Please, let's talk about these books below. If you are new to my channel, welcome. I hope you like some of these books as well. Until next time, as always, happy reading. I wish you the best, and we'll talk to you later. Bye.